So, good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> I do it again. Yeah, I think it isn't working. Oh, yes, there we go. So, of course, this is me. My name is Chaya Oosterbroek, and I am the last person standing at Joost from the former shareholders team. And I fulfill the role of CEO within Joost. I consider myself self an entrepreneur. I had several businesses. I was into the fair fashion industry. We produced lovely leather bags with organic materials. I was the owner of the Center for Young Entrepreneurship, not for young in age, but young in entrepreneurship, of course, and I consulted for the Dutch government. So, for the fir from the first moment I joined Joost, I was flooded with a lot of stories about this awesome WordPress community. And I think you see in my background a couple of familiar faces, of course. And the world of WordPress was always appealing to me because I loved the idea of open source, of course. But I often wondered um, how, how people actually made money. And that was not something that people talked about, really. But luckily, luckily, I had some some awesome colleagues who explained that to me, because we all ma make WordPress, of course. We do that by, voluntary, by volunteering, and of course there are those companies that support or finance um, core teams, for example, like we do at Yoast and within uh, the Newfield Group. So today, I will take you through my story, and first I will tell you why one can decide to to sell. Then, of course, I will tell you on how that's done. And lastly, I will tell you what it is like to be sold, what implications are there, and what challenges can you come across. So, let's start with the why. In general, selling a company can be a strategic part forward for several reasons. Of course, market entry or expansion. The clicker and I are not in sync. <laughs> yeah, not clicking. Access, of course, to tech and talent. Uh, you can look for a competitive advantage. And, of course, the diversification of your business and entering new business areas. So, each acquisition is, of course, unique, and the decision-making process can be quite complex and involving a lot of different stakeholders, of course. But the ultimate, ultimate goal is to ensure that the acquisition not only makes financial sense, but it also should be a strategically po to position your company to grow and to create more success. So, let's delve a little bit into my story, how I became a shareholder at Yoast, which wasn't, of course, being a part of this acquisition um, um, process. So, the journey began just before the COVID hit. I switched places in the Netherlands, and, then, and because of COVID, my business in India rapidly closed down. So, after some reflection, I decided to look for a new opportunity in my new neighborhood. And that's where I came across a beautiful company called Yoast, and they were looking for a position at support. And I replied, and luckily, they hired me. And in that process, I received a lot of complicated questions for a person you might know, and that's Taco, who really made it really difficult for me, of course. So, with, with um, China opening rapidly the manufacturing, it was clear for me. I needed to ensure that all of the employees of my business in India were taken care of, and then I could fully focus on my new adventure. And weeks into my new role as a support manager, something shifted in the board of shareholders. 
And that prompted me to be more involved in the Yoast business. So I approached Yoast and Marika, maybe a little bit bold, and I told them I should be your next shareholder. I should join your board of directors. And I was expecting that they would probably laugh in my face, but luckily they didn't. And <laughs> of course, I'm still happy about that as well. So as an entrepreneur, I knew that it was really important to put yourself out there because otherwise no one will notice you, of course. So a new chapter began. A new chapter began, sorry. A new chapter began. And after do my own personally due diligence, of course, this chapter began. I need to be in sync with my slides here and the clicker. I'm sorry for that. Um, so being weeks into my role as a shareholder, we noticed that the COVID, COVID hit was, of course, a paradigm shift for all of us. But it made us worry about, for example, the exchange rate. And that is far less fun than coming up with beautiful product ideas and scaling and growing your company, of course. So, I was told that the WordPress ecosystem already had changed over the last couple of years. And a lot of companies had bigger companies behind themselves, and we were still bootstrapped. So you can imagine that in that kind of situation, it became, became a little bit stressful at some points. So we decided to proceed, proceed with looking for a bigger company behind us. We assumed that Joost would be still of interest of a lot of different companies, because in the past, Joost and Marika, the founding partners of, of Joost, had, had turned down several offers. So, what's next? So, I will dive into what, how to best, best approach such a sale. I share a couple of our steps with you. So, if you consider yourself a professional, I would advise you to search for a really good banker that will assist you in all of this process. And together with the banker, we did all of our preparations, of course, and soon in this process we already learned that we were still of interest to a lot of parties. And this also taught me that when you grow really quickly from startup maybe even to a skill up, it is really important to structure everything, to have the foundation of your company really structured. And that also gave me the, the opportunity to, of course, have in a kind of pressure cooker setting to even have more knowledge about all the details that were going on in our business and our actually how awesome it was. I was already excited, but now I became even more excited, of course. So, as shareholders team, we were thinking about what kind of criteria we will yeah, check. We will check the, 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 the potential buyer. So, one of the most important things for us was our core values the new investor should definitely believe, of course, in open source. That was really important for us. Secondly, we didn't want a financer that had background or was financing in the war industry or even child labor. That was not an option for us. So, if you... All other areas to consider in this process, sorry, is the, it's not in sync. Okay, so there are a lot of areas to consider in this process and it will be 
too far stretched to touch on everything, of course. But the first important thing is, of course, your strategic alignment. So the first, first step is evaluating how well this acquisition aligns with your company strategic goals. This includes considering whether the acquisition would help the company to make this the biggest impact for your products. We, of course, Yoast was SEO for everyone, so we wanted to scale that. Secondly, a financial analysis is really important. So you need to do a thorough fina financial evaluation. And you need to assess if the bias, if the buyer ha is a financial, has a financial stability. And that involves in looking at the credit worthiness, the cash flow, the profitability, and the overall financial strength to ensure that your buyer can actually complete the transaction and meet any post-acquisition obligations, of course. And luckily, as I mentioned before, we had this awesome banker to assist us with this as well. Sec <coughs> Secondly, what's really important is, of course, assessing your the cultural compatibility between us and them. And you need that for a successful integration. And maybe like every entrepreneur was saying, our culture is unique. We really take care of our people. So we thought that it was important to see how that matches. So one, the second point in our criteria list was this um, cultural fit, of course. And we know on forehand that if you mismatch that, that can lead to other issues in the upcoming years. So, as I mentioned, core values are really important. And one of the things we really focused on was equality. Because within our company, we made sure that everyone has the same opportunities to advance and make an impact, of course. So diversity in leadership, we looked at the division between genders and the different backgrounds, because Joost is built on equality. Think of our care fund or our diversity fund. And you can imagine that we asked all of these kind of questions in all of the conversations we had. So back to the banker and his team. They had listed a number of potential partners, and we, and we agreed to talk to several of them. So, stepping in the world of private equity, venture capital, it's a totally different environment. And, it's, and it brings you also some different perspective to your business as well. And we had several meetings with a lot of different people, and every time there was a different angle, of course, to the meeting that we had. So after a few weeks, we had a smaller list, which we decided to proceed with. And there it is already on the slide. Um, we were eventually acquired by New Fold Digital. And you might not know that name, but I am sure that you know Bluehost. And together with Bluehost and Yoast, we are still aiming to do the best for our WordPress users, of course. So, what's next after acquisition? Then you need to announce that to your workforce. And I can tell you, there are a lot of emotions that come to play because you are going to make changes. So, after all these preparations, 
and countless conversations, the moment was there. We announced, we announced to almost everyone this message in person. And I need to speed up a little bit, sorry. Um, so what we, what we did, we called up people. We couldn't do a big town hall um, because it was summertime, it was during the holidays. So we ensured that we had reached almost everyone, of course. And we had a lot of different reactions. Some people were really surprised and some people also couldn't actually follow that. But we started to talk about the why, why we did this sale. And it was really important, of course, to show leadership. We communicated that with a big company behind us, we wouldn't be as vulnerable, for example, the exchange rate. We will have more room to experiment. And we could even create more beautiful products for our customers. Is there another way because Okay, dokey. Um, yeah, so um, of course, um, uh, customer reactions um, and um, client and market, yeah, so, yeah, so not only the employee reactions, but of course, you receive a lot of reactions from your customers, from the market, and I think it was a bit similar. Some were surprised and some were really thinking that this was the most logical step to do and to even grow our impact. And of course, this comes with a lot of... Should I point somewhere else? Okay, there we go. Um, it comes with a lot of <laughs> integration um, uh, challenges. So. After a merger, organizations often find a lot of these kind of challenges. And that can significantly impact your success and efficiency. So, and we were no exception. There is a lot of information available about mergers and how you should go about that. But I can already spoil you, you will run into the same issues everyone is talking about. You can prepare yourself, but people will behave a little bit different, and, or maybe unique. So, I will dive a little bit into the uh, importance of integrating culture, and then I need to skip a part because we are uh, a bit more delayed. So, um, Um, okay, so um, um, change is of course hard and people will always struggle to find their ways in a new shared future. And I say new shared future because it's really important to integrate cultures. Because a well-integrated culture is essential because it dire directly impacts or affects your internal he health of your organization and also its external success. A well-integrated culture not only enhances employee satisfaction, but also productivity, and it also con contributes to a sustained growth of your business and a stronger market position. Um, and of course, It is not in sync, uh, people. So I will now try to freewheel a little bit more. Um, of course, you want to prevent that um, you lose customers. And if you 
and a very important thing here is also you need to be clear to your people as well. So if you don't share a clear vision, your employees start to uh, making decisions that are maybe not aligned with the bigger goal, of course, here. And of course, they might leave and you don't want to have that. So it's really important to keep the team together. Um, so it could also lead to working a bit slower. So it will reduce your productivity as well. And eventually it can lead to low spirits and maybe higher costs. Um, so you, we were of course wanting to prevent all of those things and in my view the key focus should be boosting, uh, boosting employees morale and keeping the team together. Why? Because the heart of a successful company is the culture that uplifts its people, where their, uh, where their beliefs are accepted and where, there is where inclusivity is not just a buzzword, but an actual practice. So the, the, the environment doesn't just make people happier at work, it makes them more engaged, more productive and more committed to the organization. And let's face it, if, we, if you don't catch your culture right, you risk a lot. High staff own, owner, lower morale, and a team that's just not in. So how did we go about that? So we rolled out a crystal clear communication plan. We didn't just send out emails, we met everyone face to face, as I just mentioned. We opened up about the decision to join hands with Newfold. We shared our thought process and the why behind it. And these weren't just rushed meetings, no, we actually invited feedback as well. And we made sure that there was enough, enough time. Okay, I will try that. <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, 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 when we think about how we unified cultures can boost an organizational efficiency and productivity, it's all about streamlining. Streamlining how we communicate, how we make decisions, and how we get th things done. So imagine a workspace where everyone, regardless of the background, works together in perfect harmony. And this isn't just good for the atmosphere, it leads to better teamwork, and it leads to better teamwork, more innovations, and effective problem solving. And on the flip side, if, we don't think our, if you don't think your culture is well, it can lead to misunderstanding and can lead to slowing your organization down. Can you please tell me how much time I have because... <laughs> okay. Okay. I need to skip then a bit. I'll leave this part out. Oh. 
Okay. Maybe I can pick it up for here if, if it works. So let's dive into four crucial st strategies for success in integrating post acquisitions. First, of course, is communication. You need to have a crystal clear plan for that. Secondly, <laughs> that's, uh, should we start the Q&A? <laughs> Maybe some people have some questions because this ain't working. And now someone else is clicking. All right. I can, if we can get it to slide, the, ne the next slide, yes, okay. So strategies for success, communication, cultural har harmonization, I, I, I touched on that a little bit, Syst uh, systematic integration, and of course you need to focus on business success. Because it's not a all about the culture, of course, the culture probably will drive and let tri will drive your, let drive your business as well. And yeah, in conclusion, but uh, it is a bit scattered and fragmented uh, this time. Um, I would say that if you incorporate your four crucial strategies that I just mentioned here before, you will probably make a really big impact. I told you a little bit about my journey, how I became a partner, a shareholder at Yoast. And um, my main message here is that being acquired, the process of leading to being acquired is really interesting and fascinating, of course. But the real work starts after being acquired, of course. You have a lot of integrational challenges. You have culture to think about, your people that, of course, make your success, your product. That's really important. You have you need to innovate and you need to see how you can consolidate with the bigger organization that you joined, which talented, which talents are working around, which great minds can you use to enhance your, your product as well. I would like to go over to the Q&A because this is basically the talk. If you want to... <laughs> If you want to, st oh yeah. can you someone skip it to the last slide? Would be awesome. Yeah. So, if you want to follow this presentation, um, please use the QR code. And I will be around today and tomorrow for any questions. Um, and I can tell you a lot about my journey and a lot of more de details about how you do how you run a business after being acquired. So I'm so sorry for this fragmented presentation, um, but thank you for sticking so long in this room with me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Chaya. Thank you, thank you. Um, do we have any questions? Stick your hand up if you have a question. We have, some, we have a microphone here in the audience. There's one down the front here. <laughs> so, uh, looking back at the past two and a half years that we've been part of Newfold, is there anything you would do differently in the sales process? In the sales process? No, I don't think so. And um, I think the most important thing here to highlight is you need to have conversations with totally different um, um, investors or companies. You need to take the time to compare every interesting part a party. Because it's only not only, as I tried to point out, it's not only financially driven, it's also about that fit that you can actually grow your company and make an impact as we at that time, of course, and still will do now, make an impact for everyone. Hoi Viola. So thank you very much for your great talk, <laughs> even <laughs> with all these technical problems. And um, so I w have also a question to you. Uh, the bag for goods, what happened with this? Is it still 
there no, and yeah. No, it's uh, unfortunately it is not because of of COVID. I decided together with the team on the ground there to stop that. So I've given a, a bunch of the inventory to some people um, uh, that were running the business to give them the opportunity after COVID to maybe relaunch the brand, but. Um, um, some did, but not under the same brand. But everyone is still um, in contact with a couple of them, and uh, they are doing good. But I can tell you that at that time, we had 40 people working for our brand, and that was really hard. And yeah, I think we all saw the news what happened everywhere around the world. But yes, that's um, uh, that ended there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and the session was really insightful. So I just would like to ask about the future plans, you know, wh wh well, while you are maybe on the board of Newfold Digital, and you are, you are, you know, a part of Yoast, so what are the future plans for Yoast and you? Well, for, so after uh, being acquired by Newfold, we had the luck of a general manager entering the Yoast company. She is responsible for the whole European business. That's Kimberly Cole, she, she is at the booth, she's sitting here, so you can always um, go up to her. Um, for me personally, I decided to stay on longer. So I will see where my opportunities are. I will be at Yoast, I will be running Yoast on a daily basis, and I, of course, be a part of this bigger, awesome company called Newfold, and that also gives me a lot of opportunities, of course, to grow and to learn from our talented colleagues. Thank you. Any other questions? Chaya, I have a question for you, actually. I'm curious, when you um, had those conversations with the team about the acquisition, were there any surprising um, reactions or responses from the team yeah. about it? At, um, um, there was one conversation, because it was a family, uh, a family business, as you call that. There was one conversation that they suggested to kick all the women out. That definitely surprised me. That's a short answer, but that's the one that I d definitely I remember. More. And, I couldn't, <laughs> and I couldn't, we couldn't think of why that actually was a driver for them. But I think it was a more tradi traditionally organization or investor that thought that men ruled the world. Wow, once again, happy International Women's yeah. Day, everybody. <laughs> I thought of that example. <laughs> Any other questions? Yep, down the front here. So in the beginning, you mentioned all these reasons of why you want to sell a company. Um, you actually did, and it's a couple of years later, later. What do you think is the biggest thing Yoast actually got from it? I think access to great minds within the Newfield Group, innovation, and maybe consolidation of some of our products as well. So we have a far more, more bigger reach, of course, with our um, uh, with joining a team like Newfold. Thank you. We've still got time for a couple more questions, if anyone has them. Okay, well, again, thank you so much, Chaya. We actually have a little gift here for you on behalf of the organizers. Thank you. So, thank you so much. Everybody give a round of applause for Chaya. Thank you. And she will be at the Yoast booth um, if you want to chat to her in person as well. Thank you all. Thanks so much.